G'day devs and fielders. I'm Ellie. I'm a developer relations engineer working with the Filecoin Foundation and Protocol Labs. And today I want to introduce you to a project we're really excited about and that will hopefully help demonstrate the future of data processing. And that is Bacalyao. So I'm going to be showing you a really cool example of how to build your own text to image code and then run it on Bacalyao, which for those that haven't heard of it, isn't just a Portuguese fish but a peer-to-peer -peer computation network. So here's the timestamps for those that want to go directly to what they're interested in as well. First, I want to see this fully built model in action on Bacalhau, and then I'll chat a little bit about what Bacalhau is, how it works, and what advantages it can offer you. I'll then give a brief breakdown on what, stable, what a stable diffusion model is. <laughs> it's good that I can say the name already, and how it fits into the machine learning world. And then I'll move on to walking through how you can create this example end to end and run it on the Bacalhau network. Uh, so you can find the example I'm going to go through today in the Bacalhau docs, along with a host of other really awesome examples you can try out for yourself. And in this video, we're going to be building, testing and running machine learning code, which will take any text you provide it and transform that text into a funky and original image. Pretty cool, right? I was excited to do this video and see how it works. Uh, so before we get started, let's take a sneak peek of what our final example looks like for all the visual learners out there out there and to clarify before we start you do not need any prior knowledge of Bacalhau you don't need any a data science degree you don't need any special developer environment or hardware to join me here either so let's just uh go ahead and run the command up here so i've just got um my visual studio code open vs code open but i'm really only going to use the terminal for this and i want to be able to see the file structure so i'm just going to install Bacalhau, and it's just one line of a code to install that uh, so you can find this in the docs as well i'm just going to install it or make sure it's already installed as mine is although my server and client version are different so you may update that because they need to be the same uh, to work well uh, and if you do want to check that you can just do a uh, bacalhau version to check that as well um, obviously needs my password so So again, if you just want to check your versions here, uh, you can just do back with your version now that we've got it installed uh, to check that our client and server version are the same. Uh, so awesome. Now uh, we can have some fun. Uh, we can try out the example in action. So I just need to run Bacalhau, which uh, calls the Bacalhau CLI, and then I'm going to run the Docker image that's stored on, on back, that's stored here. Um, on our Bacalhau repository um, and I'm going to give it a few flags, one of which is COD swimming through data. I'm just going to run that now. Now it'll take a few minutes to run here um, before the example populates. So we will be using Python throughout this video, uh, but I'll walk you through everything the code does. So if you have any sort of coding background, you'll be more than capable of doing this yourself. The main point here is if you can write Python or Go or JavaScript, any language and want to use any type of, of data, then Bacalhau is for you. And even if you don't, if you can open the terminal like you saw here on the computer and paste these two lines of code into it, you can use uh, this uh, tutorial. You can use this text to image network. Now that it's finished running, we can just use the command that it says here and uh, do a Bacalhau get on the job ID. So let's try it out and see what images we get. So it's fetched the results and we can see we've got a populated library for the job up here. So let's take a look at some of this library. Um, so <laughs> well, I've put an example of cod swimming through data in here and this is the image that we have come up with. So many cool cod, right? Uh, you can you can run this multiple times and you'll get uh, t different images each time. So just run this uh, Bacalhau get command um, to populate that image and then we'll see it in our folder there. So why Bacalhau? Uh, building and testing machine learning models, I'm, and I'm going to go uh, back a little bit here, but building and testing machine learning models can be a tricky business. This is mostly because of the compute power you need to train and run them. 
And like most development, you need a few things to get started. So in fact, when I asked fellow ML model chat GPT what I needed to get start with, started with machine learning, told me I needed a programming language for writing and running machine learning code. Okay, we know, I know some Python, so great, check. Uh, I told me I needed a machine learning framework or library that has like pre-built algorithms and tools or resources uh, for building and training those machine learning models. Uh, so technically this isn't essential. You could, you know, build your own model implementation, but that's hard. And that would like be building, like building your own sort function. So luckily that's not necessary. There's several open source libraries out there like TensorFlow, which we're going to use here today, as well as PyTorch and Scikit-Learn, uh, which you could also play around with using. And if you do go ahead and like create some examples on either of those libraries, we'd love to see those examples. So hit us up in our Slack channel if you do end up doing anything like that. Um, the third thing that ChatGPT told me I needed was a data management and analysis tool for managing and working with the data. So something like Microsoft Excel, Pandas or NumPy. In this case, we're just using a TensorFlow implementation. Uh, the model's been pre-trained for us. So we don't really need to do any management or analysis of the data. So we don't really need that. Um, but uh, FYI, uh, check out the landscape section in our docs for a comparison on some of the compute landscape uh, environments out there if you're interested in that sort of thing. Uh, the fourth thing it told me I needed was a developer environment or integrated development uh, or integrated development environment, an IDE, for writing and managing my machine learning code. So uh, this could be a simple text editor like VS Code or a more advanced one uh, made for machine learning like PyCharm or Jupyter Notebook. So in this example, I'm going to use Google, Google Colab, um, which is free and just connects to your Google account uh, and is based off the Jupyter Notebook, but you can share it as well and it has some other cool features. Um, so don't need to worry about uh, any specific uh, setup environment here. Uh, I'll show you how to install Google Colab and start in there as well. So the fifth thing it told me I needed was a computing platform or cloud service for running my machine learning code and training my model. So this could be my local machine, a dedicated server, or a cloud computing platform. And this last one is really where things get complicated because even if you're familiar with all the other items on these lists, machine learning models can chew up a lot of computing power and can take a really long time to run. Uh, if you thought compiling a large code set or waiting for an Ethereum tra transaction to be processed in a block was time consuming, well, machine learning model processing is what ping pong tables in the office were really made for. <laughs> so using your local, ex uh, you, you, can you do this locally or on the cloud though? Yes, you can. You can use your local machine for small examples. That's possible. In fact, I did manage to get this particular example working on my really unhappy about it, Mac M1. But once you start doing bigger data processing, you're really gonna need more gas. And if you don't have a dedicated server lying around the house, I certainly don't, you're going to need to use a virtual machine on a cloud computing platform. And not only can that be inefficient due to the data being an unknown distance from the computation machine, but it gets costly really fast. Luckily, uh, and in fact, I did try and spin up a cloud environment on Google Cloud, uh, but it wouldn't allow me to spin up a Google Cloud free tier GPU model. So I couldn't actually even find a way to do this for free in the cloud. So luckily, though, these problems are some of the issues that Bakuya is trying to solve. Making data processing and computation open and available to everyone and speeding up the processing times um, is possible in Bakuya. Firstly, it by using batch processing across multiple nodes, and secondly, by putting the processing nodes where the data lives. Um, so let's take a look at this Bakuya architecture before I dig into the example. Uh, as I mentioned a bit earlier, Bakuya is a decentralized computation network which provides a platform for public, transparent, and optionally verifiable computation. So it was originally conceived to bring useful compute resources to data stored on the IPFS and file network, and file, file not just file network, file coin network, uh, and bring the same benefits of open collaboration on data sets stored on IPFS and file coin to generic compute tasks, which is a really big goal and really awesome. So if you do want to hear more, I recommend this video by our lead, uh, David Aronchik. 
uh, and check it out on the Back We Are Project YouTube if you want to dig in deeper on 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 that um, vision. So yes, for those of you that are fo following the Filecoin Star Map as well, Back We Are will go hand in hand with the Filecoin Virtual Machine, which is Filecoin's EVM compatible layer one. So while FVM can offer programmable data on small amounts of state, like most on-chain computation, Bakuya provides you with compute over that data or any data. It doesn't have to be, be, be um, on Filecoin. Uh, and that includes big data with support for GPUs. And in the not too distant future, you should even be able to leverage it by calling back out in your smart contracts, which I can't wait for. So that gives you the ability to interact directly with data stored on, stored on the Filecoin blockchain, which is a big win for developer experience and for users. So if you're interested in keeping an eye um, out for this, keep an eye on Project Frog, which is a POC the team is working on now. Um, so how does Bakuya work? As I mentioned, it's a peer-to-peer -peer network of nodes that enable users to run Docker containers or WebAssembly images as tasks against data that's stored in IPFS, which is the interplanetary file system. So it provides a platform for public, transparent, and optionally verifiable computation. So this is known as Compute Over Data, or COD for short which, fun fact, is where Bakuyao's name comes from. So Bakuyao is Portuguese for COD, Compute Over Data, COD. <laughs> um, so each node in the Bakuyao network has both a requester and compute components. So to interact with the cluster, the Bakuyao CLI requests are sent to a node in the cluster via JSON or HTTP, uh, and it then broadcasts messages over the transport layer to other nodes in this cluster. So all other nodes in the network are connected to the transport layer and so have a shared view of the world. And you can see here some of the Bakuyao system components and just a little diagram of how that works. Um, so it means that when a job is submitted to Bakuya, it's forward, forwarded to a Bakuya cluster node, which acts as the requester node. The requester node broadcasts the job to other nodes in the peer-to-peer -peer network who can then bid on the job, which creates a really efficient job deal market. So depending on the flags given to the requester node, and they can include so many things like concurrency, confidence, as you'd imagine in machine learning models, minimum bids before you would would accept one. So you might want to take at least 10 bids uh, from nodes before you accept one. Uh, reputation of the nodes, the locality, you might want it really close, the cost, uh, maybe even hardware resources, and even volumes like uh, such as IPFS CIDs, for example. So the requester node accepts one or more matching job bids, and the accepted bids are then executed by the relevant nodes using the storage providers that executed node has mapped in. For example, the Docker executor and IPFS storage volumes could be one of the mappings. So once the job is complete, a verification will be generated, which if accepted leads to the raw results folder being published to the compute node, which is what we're after. So the default compute node, uh, compute node by the way, is estuary.tech, which is uh, a big data on border. So there's a lot more flexibility to this process, but the main thing to understand is that Bakuyao gives you, the user, uh, the ability to execute a job where the data is already hosted and across a decentralized network of servers that store data, enabling you to save time, money, and operational overheads, all things we love. And it also provides referenceable and reproducible jobs that are easy to manage and maintain, which is a really cool feature as well. All right, phew, now that we understand what's going under the hood, let's take a quick look at what stable diffusion is before we dive into the code here. Um, so <laughs> stable diffusion. So uh, just taking a, a back step for a little bit and, um, you know, giving a framework for where stable diffusion fits in. Essentially, machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence or AI, which is focused on having computers provide insights into problems without explicitly programming them, hence the name. Uh, so there's three main types of machine learning. There's supervised learning, there's unsupervised learning, and there's reinforcement learning. Uh, and by the way, ChatGDP is a large language model that's based on reinforcement learning. Uh, fun fact there for you. Uh, so deep learning is then a category which sits in, uh, in machine learning. So 
It has other things fall under it like neural networks, but it's also the category that stable diffusion falls under. So it's a subset of machine learning application that teaches itself to perform a specific task. And in this case, we're converting a text input to an image output. So, and stable diffusion is kind of the particular model uh, used currently for doing this text to image processing and is also the same model as DAL-E uses, um, so it's pretty standard. Uh, it's based on a diffusion probabilistic model that uses a transformer to generate images from text. Uh, and in this example, we'll be using a pre-trained model in TensorFlow, Google's open source machine learning library. Um, now you don't need to really worry about the ins and outs of how stable diffusion works, uh, unless like me, you're kind of curious. And if so, I really encourage you to dig in further. There's lots of resources around to explain it. Uh, but generically, like stable diffusion is what happens when say you put a couple of drops of dye into a bucket of water. Given time, the dye randomly disperses and eventually the, it settles into this uniform distribution, uh, which colors all the water evenly. So in computer science, you define the rules for your particles, which is the dye to follow, and then the medium that this takes place in. Um, so that's, that's it at its core. Uh, there's a little bit more to it, uh, but we don't really need to know that. Let's just get on with building it and having some fun with it. Alrighty, so yay, the coding part. So as I mentioned a few times, I'm gonna be using Google, Google Colab to go through this example, which is based on uh, Jupyter Notebooks, the open source Jupyter Notebooks. Um, and you can share uh, these, these models, upload them to GitHub and things like that. If you don't already have a Google, Google Colab, you can install it on Google Marketplace and then you can just go to the link here and um, this is what will open up. You'll have nothing in there, obviously, because it's a new package. Um, so if you want to go ahead and do that, uh, you can follow along with this example just fine and uh, type things in as we go. Um, now, one more thing, since this example does use a GPU based environment, we're just going to switch our runtime out our runtime environment from the runtime menu in Google Colab to run on a GPU. Now we don't need a premium GPU for this one, just the, the normal one that it offers is totally fine. So just before we do go ahead and install those dependencies, I'm just going to check that we're connected to a runtime. So at the top here, we just want to connect to a hosted runtime uh, and that should be on a GPU setting. So then we'll go ahead and uh, run, install those dependencies. Uh, and once that fin that's finished, we're going to go ahead and run our script. The first time is a little slow as it needs to uh, get the ML weights. Uh, so it does speed up in subsequent runs, not necessarily on Google Colab, but generally it will speed up on subsequent runs because it's already downloaded the weights. Uh, once we've done that though, we should get a cool image of a astronaut riding a horse, which is just what we asked for. So awesome, we now have an astronaut riding a horse. But what can we do with this script really? Like it's pretty much we have to uh, change this string every time. There's no inputs, so we can do better, I think. So let's go ahead and add some parameters to this script. Uh, firstly, though, I will go ahead and cl clean up the GPU uh, RAM usage because we go and have a look at our um, resources tab here. We can see that the GPU usage is pretty high. So we will just clean that up before we go ahead and make this next script. Now, number is a package that can do that for you. So we're just going to quickly install number uh, and then clear the GPU men memory by um, importing CUDA, which was one of those NVIDIA drivers um, from number and getting the current device, which is our virtual machine here and resetting it. Alrighty, let's make a script that takes those inputs. So in this one, basically it is the same image. We scroll down a little bit, uh, sorry, same script, not the same image. We never get the same image twice, I have to say. Uh, but this is basically the same script. So if we scroll down, we can see that we've got a generator, an image, uh, which was exactly the same as our original script. 
All that we've really added here is argparse, and that's so that we can pass in arguments to our script and give them some, give our script some parameters. So we've got a height and width, the height and width that we want the image to be, a prompt, which is the all important uh, text prompt, and we're setting all of these to, to defaults as well, by the way. Uh, so we'll set the default here to dog. We've also got that number of steps, the temperature and batch size. So how many images do we want to create? Uh, default is one, but you can change that with a parameter. And then we need our output folder. So where do we want to store these images when they are ready? When the uh, stable diffusion has done its magic, where do we want to store these images? So otherwise, pretty uh, much the same as the last code, except right down the bottom here, where we do go ahead and save those images instead of just outputting it. So let's write this uh, script now. Uh, so we're writing that to main.py. And then let's go ahead and run our new script. So like I said, this could take a little while to run on first go. Uh, so we'll just give it a few minutes. Awesome. So now that it's finished, let's go ahead and have a look at what we got. Uh, so in this case, we just went, uh, we, let's go, you know, we just went with a default there. So we didn't add any parameter inputs to it or any parameter flags to it. So our default uh, input was dog. Let's see what cute little woofer we got here. Oh, it's got a ball. Uh, so <laughs> we've got our dog image. Perfect. That is exactly the behavior we expected of our script. Let's try and use some of those uh, parameters though, hey? So maybe I want to send a cool Great Dane into Paris and maybe I want to create two of those images. So I'm going to go ahead and run this same script uh, with batch number of two and the prompt as cool Great Dane in Paris. And we'll just allow that to run for a, for a little bit and then we'll see what we get. Now that it's finished running, we can now display those images. So I've just written a little script here, which is using IPython display uh, to get both of those images and then display them. Woohoo, my favorite breed of dog, a Great Dane <laughs> in Paris. <laughs> Bonjour, Great Dane, I guess. <laughs> and another one. Oh, this one looks pretty comfy, uh, chilling out in Paris there. So awesome, our script works. But we haven't used Bathel Yow yet. So, um, so we're going to now Dockerize it. So Docker is uh, a package manager, basically, which allows you to run code on any and all machines, basically. Now, Google Colab doesn't actually play nicely with Docker. It doesn't have a Docker implementation. So if you do want to create the Docker file, um, and I encourage you to go and create your own Docker files, edit the script, up upload your own uh, Docker images. This is all it takes, though. You just need a Docker file uh, with these commands in it. Um, and then you can run this script here to push that up to perhaps your own repository. So in this case, I've actually got Ali hair slash Bacalao in here. So I could save my Docker image to my own Docker account, which is Ali hair in, in my Bacalao uh, repository folder. And then I've uh, named it with stable diffusion version 001. Uh, so if you do want to go ahead and do that, or you want to tweak the script, it's as simple, it's really as simple as that. Um, and that's all you have to do. So after we build this Docker image, this is when we get to try out Bakuyao. So firstly, I am just going to install Bakuyao into uh, my virtual machine here on Google Colab because I know we installed it earlier, but that was on uh, VS Code and I'm now using a virtual machine that's not on my local machine. So we'll just install it here into Google Colab with that uh, curl script um, and then we'll go ahead and run the original project. Now this time I think I want something a little bit different than a COD running through data. So I'm going to go ahead and go with pizza with no topping. Uh, and for you, those of you out there that like to watch a lot of Web3 videos, you might recognize that prompt. Uh, it's a bit of a subtle tip to uh, a well-known person in the industry. Hello, if you're watching. Uh, so uh, like we can see here, we can see the job lifecycle happening. So the job is successfully submitted. We get a job ID back. Uh, it then checks the job status and it will create, so we've already created the job for submission. We get a nice green tick there. We find a node for the job. 
note or notes, depending on, you know, what um, tags we put in there. A node accepts the job. And then once the job is finished, it will verify the results. Uh, so once that verification process has been accepted, the results will then get published by the node. So then we can go ahead and uh, download the results and execute by executing Bacchulao get and the uh, job ID from earlier. We can also go ahead and describe the job. So you can have a look at what node ran it, um, how many deals were made. So only one in this case, we're running this for free uh, on concurrency. Um, what the image was, all sorts of information here. So where the storage source was, for example, IPFS, uh, you can get all sorts of information out of this back here, describe thing. Uh, so let's go ahead and get these uh, results though, because I want to see what image we got for pizza with no topping. Uh, so <laughs> uh, let's fetch those results. You can see it's just fetching there and we should populate the folder on the left there once uh, this comes through. Awesome. So we now have populated data. If we go and have it and have a look at the image folder there, we'll get, uh, we can see the job and we'll get the populated data. So let's go ahead and display this in Google Colab for ourselves. So I'm just using the same little script before as I was before, ipython.display, uh, getting the, each of those images. And by the way, it concatenates uh, the job number. So you'll just have a little, uh, the first part of the job there, and then it'll be in combined results folder, outputs, an image. It's also in the raw folder. So you can go ahead and have a look at what outputs actually get output there. Um, but yeah, let's see our images. Oh my gosh, so many pizzas. They've all got topping though. I think this might have uh, <laughs> done, done a decent job. I'm not sure if that topping looks all that tasty though on some of these. So amazing. That's really all there is to using Bacliao. Uh, and to creating your own a text to image uh, processing model. So pretty cool stuff. Um, I'm really glad that you joined me for this journey. Uh, I am going to uh, bid you adieu now. Get involved in the future of data though. I'm just going to leave you with some of those social handles so you can follow along if this has been at all of interest to you. Uh, if you think you can uh, hook this up with other projects, if you have your own ideas, we'd love to hear about them. So tweet us, uh, we're on YouTube, our Filecoin project Slack, of course, which is a public Slack channel. And of course, we're on GitHub as well. And there's heaps more examples in the back of our docs. So don't forget to go and have a look at them as well. Otherwise, the best way to predict the future is to create it. Thanks for joining me, everyone. See you soon.